Hey guys, Andy here from the Two Chaps channel. How are you doing? Thank you for joining me. Now, you may have heard that the government have brought forward the ban of the sale of new petrol and diesel cars from the year 2030, with hybrids not far behind actually, in the year 2035. Now this might put you in a new predicament, like I was in a few months ago, where you're like, I've got an ICE car, an internal combustion engine car, and maybe I should start to dip my toe into that pool of electric vehicles. But where do you invest your hard-earned quiche? Because let's face it, there are micro-hybrids, mild hybrids, PHEVs or FEVs, FHEVs or FEVs, and BEVs as well. There's a whole cluster what's it of acronyms. So I thought, why not give you a brief explanation of what each of those electric variations do, and then what I decided to do uh, when I made my decision. So, let's go. So we start with micro-hybrid systems, and this is pretty much commonplace technology across all new cars now. And all it essentially means is the car has a energy management system in it, which allows the car when stopped or idle to start and stop without you touching the ignition. And that in turn saves fuel. That's all it is. Mild hybrid. Now mild hybrid is a step above micro hybrid in that it gets a bigger battery and a bigger electric motor. And what that allows you to do is get extra power under acceleration. Essentially, it gives you extra torque as well as the stop start technology. What it's essentially doing is making up for the slight lag that you get from a combustion engine in terms of power delivery and gives you a little oomph of electric power just to give you a little extra torque to get off the line. So full hybrid is next, or FHEV, or even self-charge hybrid, which is what Toyota call it. And what a full hybrid does is takes the mild hybrid technology and just ramps it up. So you get a bigger battery and a bigger electric motor. And what that allows you to do is drive the car in fully electric mode, but only if the car's not too cold or going too fast or under any sort of duress. So it's perfect in traffic or traveling slowly around a car park, um, going downhill, uh, or even sort of on a motorway if you're cruising and just let, you know, you're lightly dabbing your foot, it'll kick in and out of EV mode. Plugins do exactly what they say on the tin. If you want a fully charged battery, you have to plug it in. But it does allow fully electric driving of ranges up to sort of 50 miles in some cases. Uh, which means if you have a commute of seven miles or so there and back, you can literally plug your car in overnight, do your seven miles, go there and back and not have used a drop of petrol or diesel. And even if you did run out of full electric charge, you'd still have the ability to rely on your combustion engine to get you home. Now, lastly, we have the BEV or the battery electric vehicle or fully electric vehicle. This is as it says, the electric vehicle says bye-bye to noisy, smelly combustion engines and hello to a big old battery and a big old electric motor. And with modern advances in technology, you can now get cars that can range anywhere from 100 miles all the way up to, I think Tesla have just got one that's come out that can do 400 miles, 402 miles, something like that. So there really is an electric vehicle that caters for everyone. So which one do you go for now that you know all of the hybrid and electric options available? Well, a lot of it comes down to budget, lifestyle, and accessibility around your house or your place of work. If you've got 45 grand sat in your back pocket, and a driveway at home, there is nothing to stop you installing a high-speed charge outlet on the outside of your house by a Tesla Model 3 and get two to 300 mile range of happy electric driving, job done. If, however, you've got 25 grand sat in your back pocket, you don't want to run cables around the house, you don't want the faff of plugging in things, 
um, then why not go for a full hybrid or a self-charging hybrid as they're called, like the Corolla or a Yaris or something like that. Or you might have a 14 mile round commute, don't really want to outlay all that money for an electric car and are happy running cables between your house and your car. Go for a plug-in hybrid. It literally is electric horses for electric courses. Well, as most of you will know from having seen this video up there, I popped for a 2020 Corolla 2 litre full hybrid or self-charge hybrid. Why? Because the wife and I did not want to keep plugging in cables every other night. Uh, we essentially wanted a lazy hybrid that would take care of itself and we'd get good economy and also a bit of extra power as well. All you need to know is that the government are ploughing in £1.3 billion into electric vehicle infrastructure. Charging points are popping up all the time. Electric vehicle and plug-in hybrids, they sales have tripled in the last year. And we still have 10 years left before that new diesel and petrol ban comes into place. Just imagine what's going to happen with electric vehicle technology in those 10 years. So that's just about all we have time for today. If you haven't already, do hit that little subscribe button and hopefully we will see you next time. But until then, take care. <laughs>